Welcome to the Humble Hoof Podcast. My name is Alicia Harlov. This is a podcast for both horse owners and hoof care professionals, offering discussions into various philosophies on the health of the hoof and soundness of your horse. Please check us out on Facebook or at thehumblehoof.com. Someone I've wanted to talk to for a long time is Shannon Peters. She is a dressage trainer who has competed at the national championships and is also a USDF bronze, silver, and gold medalist. Now, I'm not an upper level dressage rider and I don't currently own any performance horses. I don't have a history of even showing a lot. But the reason I really wanted to talk to Shannon is because she has taken two horses to national level Grand Prix, two horses to international level Grand Prix, and six horses in the small tour pre-St. George barefoot. So she has these upper level dressage horses training and competing barefoot. And I want to talk to her about how she does it. Uh, this is Shannon Peters, and I've been a dressage trainer professional for about 30 years and was introduced to uh, kind of I started my barefoot journey, I guess, with my horses about eight years ago now when it started with one horse. And it evolved into all of my horses being barefoot and competing as such. I met Saucy Gargilo, who is my trimmer at the same time. She's been my first and only trimmer I've ever had. <laughs> and learned a ton about feet and how they function. And obviously, the, with competition horses, there's a lot of pressure to keep them shod and that they, it's necessary and that, and have learned that it's really not and learned a ton from Saucy and from Garrett Ford and a lot of people in the industry that have brought a lot of products out that have helped my horses perform and do their best for sure being barefoot. Yeah. And so you mentioned that it's one horse that kind of started it all. Can you yeah. talk a little bit about that? Yes, he is. Um, he's now retired, but he was a horse that I took to the national championships for dressage in New Jersey in 2009. And he came home ill from that, which we thought was shipping fever and ended up being Lyme disease. And unfortunately, was not diagnosed for about a year. And he, in the course of that year, foundered once in all four feet. And then uh, as we were treating him over the next couple of years, he foundered three more times. Mm-hmm. And that's the start of, I pestered Saucity for long enough that she finally returned my phone call. And uh, she's a long drive from here. She's three and a half, four hour drive from here. And she came down to see him and see if she could help him. And she did and taught me how to boot him properly and what boots to use that could be effective in, you know, bringing him back, A, from the founder, but B, back to work in some extent, and was a, a huge turnaround for the horse. He really, even through all the founders and all the problems that he had with the Lyme disease over the years, Saucity was able to get him through every founder with proper booting and padding, keeping him comfortable and keeping him able to walk properly, and I learned a ton. And, and it went from him to my young horse at the time, who is now my Grand Prix horse. And slowly, kind of over that first year, um, I took everybody's shoes off. And everybody thrived. All their feet got better. I don't have, and I should knock on wood, of course, saying this, but I don't have problems with, you know, any lameness in the front feet or ankles or injections or dispensaries or tendon problems. It, it's been a, a huge switch for me with my horses. And not that I, I certainly didn't have that many problems before either, but I would have them once in a while. And that that is that has gone away knock on wood right now <laughs> yeah wow that's so great and was there did you find there was a transition period when you pulled their shoes for some horses, there is. Well, Tino's Magic, who I showed through CDI Grand Prix, he was always a very good-footed horse. More big size four shoes. You know, he's always, from the time he was young, was a very, very good-footed horse. And he just went straight out of shoes and barefoot, and he was great. He, he never looked back. I could take him on the trail barefoot. I showed him CDI Grand Prix barefoot. 
no problem at all. My current Grand Prix horse has always been a very, very sensitive footed horse, and he is a horse that does not grow a lot of foot at all. So I always boot him just in front to train him every day, and then when he goes to shows, he wears grew on love child, easy care love child, and I just pull him off as soon as I get home. But I would say he's my only one. All the rest of my horses go completely fine barefoot and go to shows barefoot, pass dogs barefoot, so no problem at all. Wow, that's great. And do you have to do anything special management-wise in order to keep their feet as healthy as possible? No, I wouldn't say I do. They, um, you know, we have a pretty dry environment out here. Um, and then in the summertime, um, pretty rock hard hooves to trim, that's for sure. Yeah. And my horses live outside. They live out on DG paddocks and they live together. So they get quite a bit of movement. And, you know, Salt City doesn't trim a whole lot when she comes. She balances their feet, you know, to, to keep them balanced and keep the frogs and, and soles and bars happy. But she doesn't have to trim a bunch because they don't live in stalls. That's great. I have a couple of my clients' horses that do live in the stable. And, well, you know, there's those we do have to trim a little bit more because they're not quite as active and they're not living on DG either. But, no, I wouldn't say, you know, I just make sure that their hay is low sugar and properly balanced with protein and the rest of the nutrients and that they, they don't eat a lot of grain. And, so, you know, they have a, a ration balancer that's balanced for them. And But, you know, I keep it pretty simple. <laughs> I don't do a lot of supplements, and um, I think the biggest thing for them and the biggest thing for most horses is to really check your hay. I think that's been the biggest thing for me over the years of learning. You know, the biggest detriment to a horse's feet can be high sugar hay. Yeah, and do you have yours tested? We do. We have it tested um, every spring, and if we have to, we, we're lucky we have a farm in Oregon that we get hay from all year long. We from the same farm. So they batch test it every time they cut and they send us the testing and they have five or six different fields that they cut from. And if we don't like the testing for one field, we just, we find, you know, which one we like and we get the hay from that field. Oh, that's awesome. So, yeah. And then we get, we have that all year and they store it for us. So we don't have to worry about getting different, you know, different hay we don't know. And that's been huge for our horses. You know, the, the metabolic ones are, are pretty normal now and none of the horses get sore feet and good hoof growth. And, you know, that's, I think that's hugely important. Yeah. And do you have any issues when you travel for a competition or do you have any differences in management between when your horses are competing and when they're kind of on their downtime? No, I wouldn't say, you know, I have a pretty varied program with my horses. They pass on hard ground. They do cavalettis and some small jumping and they train. They really do. Their dressage training is about three days a week. So they really, you know, my focus is to really make them strong and balanced physically and mentally athletes. So their, you know, their their hoof care goes along with their body care and making sure that they're balanced and they're fit and they're strong. And I think that's the one thing I've learned with my horses being barefoot that maybe I wouldn't have contemplated so much before, but truly their hoof strength has to equal or even be better sometimes than their overall body strength. You know, it's, it's, it is the landing part of every, every step they take and it goes all the way up the leg, all the way up their body. So if their hoof isn't strong, the heels aren't strong, the frogs aren't strong, the internal structures of the foot aren't strong, that's not a very good starting place for the rest of the body. And that's been, you know, my, I have a couple of horses that were, you know, in the beginning when we pulled the shoes off, their their heels were quite narrow and, and the digital cushion's not very strong. And, you know, the frog's not very healthy and, and kind of robust. And, and they've all changed, you know, the width of the heel, the width of the foot. And you find with that, of course, less stress on the fetlocks, less stress on the legs in general when you've got a, a hoof mechanism that works properly. Right. So that's been a you know a big learning curve for me as well, you know, learning how really those structures work and how much they support the horse and how strong they truly need to be to really support these athletes. And I have a, our good friend that shoes Stefan's horses. So, you know, I, I laugh with him quite a bit that, you know, I'm like, you can't build a strong foot on steel. It just, <laughs> it just yeah. doesn't work. And, you know, we always kind of banter back and forth about it, but. I truly believe that, you know, in all honesty, that it's when you have a living, breathing mechanism and you apply a piece of steel to it, there's nothing that can happen but deformity to the foot 
in a lot of ways. So again, that just in, in my experience, and that's not everybody's experience, of course, but in my experience, that's what I've seen and what I've learned over the years. Yeah. And it's it's been amazing to see what's come out with like Curtis Burns and Garrett Ford come up with the flex shoe that's really helped a, a few international competition horses that were, you know, having some pretty solid hoof issues that are really going strong now and going well because of a flexible shoe that allows blood flow and allows the foot to function a bit more normally. So it's been really so heartening and so great to see the evolution over the last few years with some really brilliant people who have recognized the downfalls, you know, maybe of a a steel shoe or even aluminum shoe for that matter, and come up with viable options that you know, maybe your standard chore wouldn't be so inclined to use synthetic, but they might be inclined to use these shoes. So although I don't shoe my horses, it's nice to see that there are options that are really to the benefit of the horses now. Yeah. And have you seen more open-mindedness in the, you know, competitive world to barefoot horses or horses that are in composite shoes? I think so. I think that's evolving. I really do. Slowly but surely. I think that shoers are getting more open to it. And I know our own shoer that does Stefan's horses. And I have one, one client that has her horse, or I should say, had her horse and steal. The horse is now in the flex shoes, Curtis and Garrett shoe, that were quite resistant in the beginning, but now have seen after their second, third, fourth shoeing cycle how much better the foot is. And it's hard to argue at that point. And that's, <laughs> that's right. what he says. It's like, well, it's really hard to argue with what you see. You know, more soul depth, more concavity, you know, a wider heal a better frog a healthier foot that's hard to argue you know i think it is evolving and it's it's nice to see in the industry that people are more open to it for sure right in february 2020 i actually went out to california to spend time with sasti garguillo who is shannon peter's hoof care provider It was great to be able to learn from her. And since I know that she has spent so much time getting to know Shannon Peters and the way that she trains and the way that she keeps her horses and has been providing hoof care for her for so long, I wanted to talk to her a little bit about the management of Shannon's horses and the training program as well. Really, I just kind of wanted to ask you if you could make a few comments about if you did anything like special with their fee or anything during transition? I don't really do anything particularly different except I tend to be much more conservative with them. I guess mainly because I know that they are like they're there to work. They're brought in as horses for training and you know the owners know okay this is you know we're going on this program. They don't want to be like oh yeah by the way you know the horse hasn't been ridden in weeks because it's lame or something like that because of going barefoot. You know, I want it to be successful every horse, every time. So I try to always keep that in mind. And, you know, we're always trying to tweak things in a better direction, but not aggressively, which is kind of funny because it kind of goes with like dressage training in general. But, you know, you're, you're coaxing towards better balance, better strength, all those things. So it's nice because like in the beginning, you know, we said make a lot of metaphors or, you know, relations to dressage training and the patients and the development and scale of um, strength and balance and it's the same sort of feet. I don't necessarily do anything different. Like, you know, I would never do X, Y, or Z on her horses, but, you know, I would do on others. Just kind of keep in mind that they need to be able to go to work. But she's super understanding of that and knows what it takes and you get them right in boots first time even if they end up only needing them on the trail at least they have them right and are Um, they mostly warm bloods that come in yes yes she's had a couple like she has um andalusian we had a pony but mostly warm bloods yeah and would you say like overall their feet are pretty healthy when you see them or is it kind of a range I would say it's a range. <laughs> it definitely, I mean, we've had some that were like, okay, this one, this one's going to take a little while. And then some that you could just tell they just are good to go pretty much right off the bat. You know, she's really good about letting me know ahead of time. She's good at evaluating their feet and saying, okay, like this one should be pretty good. They're pretty strong footed already. You know, I don't know if it's because they had a, a history of good health care or 
they're just genetically gifted or maybe they didn't go into shoes real young like some of the auction horses will go really young they're looking for like really dramatic movement so they're you know a little bit less developmentally concerned you know if they're really ready for that kind of a movement yeah. so it might be intention and sometimes it's toe first those horses might take a little bit longer. What I noticed about Shannon's horses is that they, they are or they become very balanced. So like when they come in, they might have like a little high-low or negative plantar angles on behind, you know, stuff like that. But it seems like her classically correct balanced riding and training really helps the horses develop their feet. Like when they're moving on their forehand and they're not engaged behind, it can show up in their feet, like dragging their hind toes. But rather than going after the symptom of the foot too much, Shannon works the horse to strengthen and develop its carrying and lifting ability and teaches them to use both sides of their body. So Shannon said that she has one horse that goes in glue-ons for competition, but for the most part, are all of them training and competing barefoot? Yes. Yeah, I would say that's that's pretty accurate. I mean, over the years, it's kind of been that way. There's been one or two that would go and glue on for competition, and the rest would just be shown, to, you know, work barefoot or booted or both, and then shown barefoot since they can't show on just boots. And how long are horses that come in for training usually there for? Well, I would say it seems to me to be a fairly long time, you know, a year or more. And there's the occasional one that just, you know, is kind of moving through in a few months. But usually I have a fair amount of time with them, you know, to really get through that first growth cycle. Yeah. I was going to say it's fun because I get to see how they, you know, how things change and how they're doing better and watch their feet change as far as, like, I can tell when they're moving more in collection and using themselves better. It's very interesting to me because I have tons of high-low horses, and they're, they're so subtle at her barn, and I have to think that it's because of her riding. She's, I mean, I've been lucky enough to ride with her and in clinics and lessons, and um, she's just, you know, it's just really classically correct and very focused on, on working and strengthening both sides of the horse evenly, and that, of course, impacts how they're loading the foot and how it looks, how it grows. I think her cross training helps them also. Like they go on trail rides, they can have a lady and they play and you know, happy horses are healthier and that goes for healthier feet as well. And so when they are booted, do they use the easy boot gloves? Is that what I saw in a video on Facebook? Yes, yes, they are all in easy boot gloves. We love them. Yeah. <laughs> they go, you know, they go so seamlessly from working in the arena to a little trail ride around. They have good but not too much traction and you can pad them. They just, they're really nice for a dressage horse. And with those positive changes in the foot, do you, did you notice right away any differences in their movement or, you know, their collection, their impulsion? Do you think that that can have a, a direct effect on their movement? I do, yes. And I, I always tell people, you know, I, I, all of my horses, and they're not, I wouldn't say, you know, they're not all naturally the best movers. You know, it's, it's been trained into them gymnastically to, to lift, to move better, to engage better. And that's what we do. Where, you know, that's our goal in dressage is to be able to do that with the horses. But I, none of my horses that are barefoot, I, I don't think I've ever in eight years scored below an eight on movement. Wow. They're just, it does not take away from their movement at all. If, if they're using themselves correctly, it allows the full extension and the full use of the shoulder. And if they're really comfortable landing on their heels, which I don't believe most horses are, and certainly most shod horses are not, and not certainly visually what I see in the industry. If they're fully functional, fully happy landing on their heels, the movement is always better. You know, they're, they're more comfortable in their shoulder extension, they're more comfortable in their forearm extension, and they're more comfortable making a full stride forward out and down onto the foot. And if they're more comfortable in front, they are absolutely more willing to engage behind. Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah, my hoof care business is very focused on heel first landings and proper biomechanics and movement. And I I don't know if you have seen some pictures of, you know, high level dressage horses where they'll take a picture of the horse in a 
in an, you know, an extended trot where to me, it looks like there's no way when that picture was taken that that horse would end up landing heel first, you know, with the amount of space the hoof has between the ground in that moment, it, you know, they, it, to me, they couldn't possibly land comfortably from that snapshot in time. Um, do you see, you kind of mentioned that, that you don't always see horses that are comfortable landing on their heels, but do you see that often in upper level dressage or do they kind of have to be able to land heel first to get to that level? No, I, I, I see a lot of horses here nationally, internationally, when we travel, you very rarely see a horse that even comfortably lands flat, let alone landing heel first. Yeah, It's extremely rare. And they, you know, is, is, wonderful creatures that they are. They still do their jobs and they still do their jobs to the best of their ability. But I see that as such a, you know, again, that it's a, been an evolution for me and I've learned so much from so many brilliant people in this business. Saucity being one of them and Garrett and Curtis and, and people that are way smarter than me about it for sure. Just how much that can affect the travel of the horses, injury rates of horses, if they're not allowed to travel and land to how they're supposed to. Yeah. At least flat. Right. <laughs> I mean, if it's great of a deal, but at least flats. I mean, that, that would, should be a baseline. Yeah. And it sounds like you had that, you were talking about your horse that goes into glue ons for competition. And it sounds like that's more just for comfort. It's not for, um, necessarily, you know, added breakover or heel support or something like that, which I hear a no. lot of. Yeah. It's just for, just for comfort and just the, you know, the, a lot of the showgrounds are either, you know, there's abrasive materials around around walking around, and I, I walk him a lot at the shows, either under tack or in hand, because he's not used to living in a stall. So I, I walk him pretty consistently when he's at shows. And I just don't want, he, like I said, he doesn't grow much foot, and I don't ever want him to get to the point that he's worn off too much, because obviously you can't add it back. So um, I just do it for protection and just to make sure that he's not going to wear off too much. The first couple of years I started doing it, I definitely had some funny looks from, (laughs) I would get one or two judges that would look and say, what is that on his foot? (laughs) And he's he's black and he's got black feet. Unless you really look from behind and you see the tread of the love child, you can't really see it. But, you know, nobody says anything. And I I once in a while will have an FBI bet say, hey, what are those? You know, I've never seen those before. But they're totally legal, right? As long as they're below the hairline. A hundred percent. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Cause I had a, a farrier friend who actually, I told her that I was going to be talking to you and she was asking me, you know, how would you, and I sent this question to you, how would you support the Hawks if they're, you know, barefoot or, or do you do something special to, you know, really help their hind end and this kind of career? <laughs> But it sounds like you're allowing the horse to do it on its own, you know? Yes. They, you know, I don't have any problem. All of my horses have plenty of concavity behind. And if they're truly engaging, they're not wearing off their toes. The same thing behind. They're landing heel first. They're landing flat on the ground and pushing off. So they're not wearing off foot. They have plenty of concavity to make a good ground purchase to either sit carry or push off and it, it i don't have any problem with it whatsoever and i've had a couple of vets over the years that says well you know you, you do a lot better he'd be able to carry more weight if you put a shoe with a trailer on it or put a you know he had more support behind him. like well why would I, I don't want the foot supporting his body weight that's not what it's there for his core muscles and his hips and his shoulders and his neck and his back and that's what's supposed to be supporting his weight yeah not a, an inch of steel behind his foot. That's not supposed to be supporting his body weight. And and for me, that, you know, when I look back and I, I look back at old pictures or I, I watch some of the shod horses in the barn, you know, that any bit of extension behind the, the heel stops that little bit of that lateral turn of the foot which they all do, right? It, it's a, there's, a, there's always a little bit of a lateral turn, either in or out, kind of depending on their conformation behind. And if they're not allowed that lateral turn, where does it go? It goes to the fetlock or the hock or both. Yeah. So the twist goes up the leg when the foot is stopped into the ground. Right. So I feel like for my horse, who's a Grand Prix horse, that it, I want him to be able to come off the ground how he wants to come off the ground or stay on the ground how he wants to stay on the ground. I don't want something keeping him there. Yeah. 
And how much of the success in your horses, um, you know, training program, do you attribute to the way that you keep them in terms of turnout and a herd uh, where they're allowed to socialize and lots of movement and, you know, a simple diet? How much do you think that is what makes it successful? Well, I think it's a, it's certainly a part of it, you know, and I try to keep their lives as balanced as I can as horses and, and allow them to be horses as much as I can. Um, and certainly for barefoot horses, obviously the more movement, the better the blood flow, the, you know, yeah. the, the, the expansion of the, you know, the, the, the foot, the, the frog, everything else working, how it should work. You know, they, they eat and feeders spread out. So they're constantly moving to eat and, um, you know, they play and they banter around and they, <laughs> they're horses. So I think it, you know, it's, it's a, it's a, fine line between doing enough to support a competition horse and also allowing them to be horses. Right. And, uh, you know, that's, I think everybody battles that as, as, a, as a trainer in this business or a horse owner in this business. I think everybody's, you know, doing the best they can to keep their horse in a, a natural setting as they can. And I'm fortunate that we have a farm and that I can do what I need to do here for my own horses. And not always that possible, but yeah. And you were saying, you know, obviously keeping the diet as simple as possible. So I had had kind of a side note question because I personally Mm -hmm. don't have competition horses of my own. Um, Do you find that when they're in heavy work that you need to significantly increase their calories or what you're feeding them to support that? I don't, no. My horses get very little grain. They get a lot of hay. Yeah. (laughs) They get a whole whole lot of hay. They're pretty much free choice hay all day long. That's for me, and again, it's just my experience. Um, Not everybody's for sure, but in my experience with my own horses, that the more and more grain you feed them, the harder it is to keep their feet healthy. Yes, yeah. Yeah, as a hoof care provider, that's what I see a lot. And I have, you know, I'll have clients that compete or you know, have their horses in harder work and they'll say that they, they want that for calories. But, you know, I totally agree. I think that hay provides, um, a lot of calories if fed properly, but not having competition horses myself, I don't want to say that without that direct experience, you know? Yeah. I'll add if I, if like at the shows, my horse can tend to lose a bit of weight and I'll add a little bit of hemp oil or something to his feed, but I really try not to increase the carbohydrates, increase the grain. Right. Yeah. Do you have any, you know, closing remarks or advice for someone who's considering having their performance horses transition to barefoot? Well, I think, um, you know, the best thing is to be patient. And I, that's something I had to learn with my horse that foundered. And, you know, I was able to, you know, through Saucity's help, bring him back to work several times in between the founders. And that's, you know, that's obviously an extreme case of, of, <laughs> of trying to bring a horse to work in barefoot. But, you know, it, it's not always easy. It's not always, it doesn't happen right away. There's not a lot of horses that can just pop out of shoes and go right to work with no problem. So, you know, finding a, the right person to help you is super important. I was lucky enough to find Saucity right away. And in really being patient and listening to your horse about, and really watching, I, you know, my husband laughs at me when we go to horse shows because I, my, my eyes are always... <laughs> always down looking at the horse's feet that we go by and and really watching how they land how they load how they track if they track straight if they you know they deviate that they're you know that it, it show, they show you where they have pain in their feet and they show you if they're comfortable landing or they're not comfortable landing and that for me is one of the biggest things I've learned and I watch every single one of my horses every day when I pull them out and when I put them away and being aware of And learning, like I did, you know, and still learning year after year after year, how to do the best for your horses and how to not take the shortcut in the easy way, because that usually in the long run isn't the right way. And if you want to try going barefoot, you know, it's it's for me been a lifesaver for most of my horses and a and a super positive thing for me as a trainer and an owner. And if you can find the right person to help you and stick it out for you know, one cycle, two cycles, maybe three cycles if it takes that to, to have a better foot that I can almost guarantee you have a healthier horse in the long run, for sure. Yeah. Thank you so much. This was so great. Uh, yeah. Thanks again. Okay. Awesome. Thank you. Have a great rest of your night. You too. Bye. Thanks. Bye. Bye.